Oh, they love it. They love it. Um, we we talked a bit about about the the investor scene and uh, and the, and the wins that you had recently with five a.m. and Ver, Versant 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 yeah Versant yeah. <laughs> I got it wrong twice <laughs> Versant yeah. Um, yeah. what what the appeal uh, the appeal to them I mean maybe in, you know in a way that you might be able to offer some hints to uh, you know to other folks who are out there developing therapies and and looking for uh, for uh, investment partners. Um, I mean, you know, you can obviously rehash the, you know, you can obviously rehash the appeal of the, of the science. And, and and I'm wondering like what it was that, that really attracted these two to what you guys are doing. Um, so, so yeah, share that for sure. Like what was it that was kind of the, the uh, you know, the golden bullet uh, w with those two investors, but also, you know, what, what connections or, or, or sort of what your approach was uh, in terms of making those deals happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the interest from 5AM Ventures and Versant Ventures and, and all the other notable funds on our cap table mm -hmm. can can really be like um attributed to the to the it's a novel it's definitely the novel mechanism uh that we have with this drug and the previous safety data generated with phase one that you know gives everybody the confidence they're gonna have some level of de-risk associated with it. Of course, you know, there's the, the there's the rudimentary stuff. We 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 did do a polished, or I wouldn't say it was a completely polished first one, but we pitched, right? And like we we did the conventional pitch 101, where it's like, this is what we want to do, and this is why we think this is going to be a valuable opp opportunity. And then there was an iteration to that in terms of the subsequent pitch. Um, so so to get uh, VC involved, there, there is the rudimentary stuff, but ultimately it's about de-risking, right? And de-risking uh, for us came down to, okay, novel mechanism, first in class, differentiated. It does uh, show really strong potency against small molecules. It shows really strong distribution. It has a really strong safety profile. And then here's the development plan. It has an, a development plan that can meet an unmet need in the obesity market and Sky's approach is an advan is advancing the development at a at a rapid clip, and we can fork it in terms of advancing a broader metabolic focus pipeline, and that's what I think made it very attractive for mm -hmm. for our cap table. Um, so these these buy uh, buy side firms, um, you know, I think recognize the transformative uh, potential of a of an approach like CV one inhibition. It helps that large pharma is interested in CB1 inhibition. So Novo Nordisk, you know, making an investment in this area. And prior to Novo making that investment, other buy side had funded, you know, a, another company in, in CB1 inhibition. So the, you see, see kind of, you know, a lot of um, uh, uh, smart players, I guess, uh, you know, attracted to the space. Yeah. Um, so th th that, that all feeds into the opportunity to invest in a program that can really redefine uh, the treatment landscape for metabolic disorders. But I mean, it's, it's all of this is still risky, right? Until we get f further along. I think we're mm -hmm. every step of the way, we're working hard to de-risk it for ourselves, for our stakeholders, for, for investors. Um, uh, but to date, I think what sets us apart is a really strong benchmark in terms of preclinical data, uh, a strong strategic development plan. We've been very aggressive in terms of our speed and and bets that we made. If you look at our phase two study, it's the first phase two study that's going to have a combination with GLP-1. Um, and it's a novel approach with the antibody and explain kind of the differentiation from the small molecule. So I think all of these components with a, with a management team that's very uh, focused on farm operational excellence uh it's it's instilled the confidence um in the uh in the buy side to uh to invest and and we're gonna you know continue executing against that plan yeah very cool um you you mentioned novo and and, and versago uh you know if, if you're making widgets and you got a great widget design and all of a sudden like one day you're like oh there's a much bigger company that's got a similar approach to its widget making, you might go, uh oh, um, in this space, I, I hear it time and time again, uh, you know, it's, uh, and I'm not going to say it's a politically correct answer, uh, but it, it makes perfect sense. Um, you know, hey, it's, it's indicative of momentum behind this approach, right? Like, it's mm -hmm. a good thing, the rising tide lifts all ships. There, there's got to be a little bit of a balance there, though, right? Like, you walk a, a balance between 
competition and uh, being on the right side of momentum. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, we're 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 doing very we're being very calculated in terms of our risk taking. Um, I think that Novo um, Novo's acquisition of Inversago kind of highlighted the growing recognition of CB1 innovation as a promising therapeutic approach. They've emphasized that since acquiring it. You know, they've highlighted uh, what they're doing in the CB1 space. It, it certainly uh, was interesting timing for us because we acquired. Bird Rock at the same time. Um, mm -hmm. So it validated our strategy. And I think, uh, you know, not to give ourselves a pat on the back, it was just very unique timing and it underscored the potential for, for Namasimap. Um, it does introduce competition, but it also reinforces the market opportunity and the need for differentiated therapies like ours. So Novo's interest in CB1, uh, it helps pave the way, um, but it also helps us really push uh, for other strategic partnerships in the field uh, as it continues to evolve. Because when you look at the anti-obesity medication landscape, the majority of the pipelines all built on the incretin-based approach. It's like over 50% of the drugs in, in development, they're all focused on incretin. If you look at the non-incretin space, the, the non-GLP-1 space, there's like, uh, like six you know, companies in phase two right now Right. And in that, you look at really Amlin as a combination with GLP-1, uh, which is what Novo is advancing. And then there's uh, others like these myostatin inhibitors and uh, kind of muscle preservation uh, specific mechanisms. And then there's CB1. So if you if, in terms of mid-stage programs, CB1 is a really in a unique spot in the anti-obesity medication landscape. And it has a unique mechanism that's targeting kind of these underlying metabolic pathways that really hopefully show the additive effect with the existing drugs. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. All right. One more, one more sort of philosophical question. And you alluded to this a little bit earlier, but I want to drill into it just a little bit more. Uh, I, I know that you're a, a, a health nut. We've talked about that. You're, yeah. you're, you know, you, you've, you've been a competitive athlete. You know, I've, I've heard, I've heard the lore, as my kids would say, about your triathlon days. Um, you know, you lift. Uh, you told me that you've you've uh, you've invested in, you know, gyms and gotten into that business a little bit. You've told me that you'd you know you, you'd love to run a gym. You'd love to own a gym. I mean, how do you how do you rationalize uh, sort of that old school you know do it the hard way mentality about staying fit and healthy and and fighting and avoiding obesity? with a therapeutic uh, approach. I know it's, it's like a, it's, it's like a, just a, a, a totally like visceral, I don't, not visceral, but it's like a, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's like a baseline question or about how you fundamentally sort of rationalize this, uh, this approach. Yeah. I mean, I, I think uh, being educated in the, in the obesity, uh, pathology or pathophysiology kind of like, I, I recognize that this is not a willpower thing. You know, I think maintaining fitness through diet and exercise is ideal, right? But I recognize that not everyone has the same starting point or the ability to achieve the health goals through lifestyle lifestyle changes alone. And and a lot of it, you know, I think we talked about this last time, a lot of it's like just privilege, right? Like it's like, you know, some of us are in a unique spot where we can devote the time to do that. Not everyone has that same uh, level of resources or bandwidth. So Mm -hmm. Um, what is important is obesity is complex. It's a very multifactorial disease with genetic, environmental, behavioral components. And for many individuals, even the best efforts in diet and exercise may not be enough due to underlying metabolic dysfunctions. Yeah. So I think therapeutic interventions, like what we're working on with Damasimab or other anti-obesity medications provide the tool to really help those individuals manage their weight and improve their metabolic health. And, and then also complementing it with lifestyle changes are then offering a path to, to this, this better quality of life that we talked about. So I, I think it's, it's an important piece of the puzzle of pharmacotherapy applying. And I think as the pharmacotherapy makes a difference, we see these cases where people get that big, um, uh, achievement or, you know, they, 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 they have uh, a change in their, in their 
uh, weight loss that allows them to then continue that momentum uh, yeah. with the required lifestyle changes and makes it easier. So I, I think it's it's both, and pharmacotherapy has a very important role to play. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think your, your, your commitment to health and nutrition puts you in a, in a good place to be leading that charge, you know, for sure. It's like the haircut analogy I gave earlier. Another one I like to use is like, I'm not going to take financial advice from somebody that's driving a 1982 Yugo, right? Like <laughs> you want someone who uh, walks the walk, talks the talk and understands the science behind it. And we're, we're really focused on that internally here as, as an organization. I mean, like, yeah, like that's, personally, yes, you know, I, I take my health seriously, but the rest of the team here is the same way. Like I'm really um, fortunate to be surrounded by a very competitive group of people. I think there's a, there's a, they, they take their um, both like mental and physical side very seriously. Um, and it, it's a, it's a good, good environment to be around for us to continue to emphasize what we're trying to do from our drug development standpoint too. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so what's, what's next on your, on the immediate horizon? Like what's the next big inflection point for, for Puneet and Sky? Sky, uh, right now we're, we're really focused on uh, clinical trial execution. So we have a phase two underway. We just announced that, uh, Dr. Aurora just joined the company as chief medical officer. So he's going to be helping leading the charge. He's the, the accountable person there on terms of clinical trial execution. Uh, we have a milestone uh, associated with clinical readout there expected in 2025. Um, so th those are the critical kind of uh, things that are value drivers here because efficacy and safety of our therapy uh, in, in a larger patient population showing that monotherapy as well as a combination can really open up uh, um, and advance our clinical development. And uh, so, so that's that's what we're geared towards. There, there's some other stuff that we're keeping close to our vest right now uh, okay. that we're getting to do. Um, uh, you know, naturally as a as a biotech with a startup uh, culture, there's there's a lot to continue to create value. Uh, but the the major value driver is execution on our phase two study. Yeah, very good. Very good. Well, I'll let you off the hook for now, Puneet. I, I appreciate the time. Thank you for the time. This is fun and 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 uh, and enlightening. That's the perfect combination. Fun conversation, a lot of good information there I uh, that you've shared. So I really appreciate it. It was good to good to chat with you. And I appreciate you letting me share some perspectives. And it's always uh you gave me a lot of energy here. So I'm, I'm excited yeah. to keep that momentum going. I appreciate you sharing the time and uh, we'll be paying attention. As I often say, uh, when there's more to talk about, we'll get you back on the show and we'll, we'll share some more success from Sky Bioscience. Excellent, Matt. Thank you.